future is here. It will be beyond our imagination. And Generation AI, we're at the center of it. This is our moment to unify everyone and everything, to break down the barriers between artificial, business, and human intelligence, to open up data and AI to everyone everywhere, and to unlock a wave of innovation from mass participation. This is our moment to become data and AI companies, liberated from the past and open to a wildly expansive future. This is Generation AI, open to everyone and led by those brave enough to become something new. Welcome to the future. Please welcome co-founder and CEO, Ali Godsey. Hello everyone, super, super excited to be here. This is my favorite week of the year, every year. So we're calling it Generation AI because I really feel like this is a really, really special time. In fact, I got a text this morning from someone that said, what an amazing time we're living in. This is the best time ever to be alive. And so we called it Generation AI because I think we're all part of this generation that's actually going to form the future of the planet, the future of technology, the future of generative AI, machine learning, and data. So it's a really, really special time. We think every company in the future will be data and AI company. And the people that are here, you're representing those companies. You are those that will shape the future of the planet. Uh, I think with this kind of technology, we all can make the world much, much better. We can make everyone smarter. We can cure diseases. And we can just raise the standard of living. Of course, there are issues with it as well. And we'll get into them. And we'll talk about them. And hopefully, we can uh, deal with them. But all in all, I think actually this is going to be game changing for us. And I think you are, you are the ones. Those of you who are here, you're the one that's going to make it happen. So very, very excited about this. So I want to welcome you all to the Data and AI Summit this year. All right. <laughs> so we're going to hear from lots of industry experts. Uh, we actually have. Now, online, 75,000 people worldwide that are actually listening in to this live stream. And we have 12,000 people here in Moscone Center, completely sold out. All right, we have lots of countries represented. So those 75,000 people online are representing, and those that are here are representing over 150 countries worldwide. We have over 320 sessions that we're going to go through. We have over 100 data teams that are showcasing what they've built, the projects that they have, lots and lots of cool stuff this week. And then we have over 100 exhibitors that you all should check out. Okay, So uh, this is truly a global event. And I really want to thank you all for making it happen throughout these years. Thank you. Round of applause to everyone who made this event possible. <laughs> okay, So this actually is our 10th year of uh, celebrating the Data and AI Summit. It started at Spark Summit, then it became Spark plus AI Summit, then it became Data and AI Summit. Uh, but we're very, very excited. Um, fast forward today, we actually now have Spark, which actually was donated to the Apache Foundation and celebrated at this conference 10 years ago, now has 1 billion downloads a year. So a billion downloads every year. Uh, Delta Lake, which sort of set this whole Data Lake House Pattern in Motion now has half a billion downloads a year. Uh, and finally, MLflow, which also was open source, donated to Linux Foundation at this conference a few years ago, has 120 million downloads a year. So these three projects represent huge communities, and you're all part of that community. You help actually make it successful. You actually uh, worked on these projects. So we're very, very thankful for all that. OK, so I want to give a special thank you to the partners that also made this event possible, especially AWS, Microsoft, and Prophecy uh, that uh, 
really, really are going to be in the uh, exhibit hall together with the other uh, partners that we have. So please go check them out. We have a really awesome lineup of speakers today and tomorrow. So today, I'm going to be joined by my colleagues. And we're going to talk about a lot of the innovations that have been working on for the last year. They're super excited. They've been working very, very hard. Everybody's stressed out. Uh, but we're also going to have Larry Feinsmith from JPMC get on stage and have a fireside chat with me about how actually JPMC, which now is the largest bank in the United States, uh, yes, leverages the lake house. So very excited about that. Uh, we're going to have Sai uh, from JetBlue talk about how JetBlue leverages AI and large language models, generative AI, to actually make the experience that they have with passengers and people that are getting on flights much more seamless so that you can exactly know what's going on with your flight. Where is it at? Which terminal should you go to? Uh, and then finally, very excited to have Wasim here. OK, so Rivian and their electric adventure vehicles use the Databricks Lakehouse AI for everything they do. So everything from optimizing their batteries to switching lanes to avoiding collision with a car ahead of you, all of that is using AI technology. So we're going to hear from Wasim of how they did it, how did they build it. So very excited to have those three uh, talk about exactly how they're leveraging and applying uh, AI and generative AI. OK. But first up, I am very, very excited to have a chat with Satya Nadella, who's actually joining us. This is end of the year for them. So in a few days, it's end of their fiscal year for Microsoft Corporation. So he's been uh, very nice to uh, join us here on Skype. I don't know if we got the Skype connection going here. Do we? All right. Welcome, Satya. <laughs> you know, I'm going to, supposed to be in a San Francisco court later this afternoon, but I'm glad to be with you this morning. Awesome. Thank you so much. Hey, Satya, I wanted to start. I'm so impressed. I mean, just seeing what you've done to Microsoft, the huge sort of transformation, it's almost unbelievable. Um, how did you do it? How did you see the importance of cloud, AI? data so early, the investments that you made, you know, what gives you those signals? I mean, first of all, Ali, congratulations to you and the entire Databricks team. I mean, what you all have done over the last decade plus, it's just unbelievable. I mean, at some level, uh, when I think about any of us who are trying to innovate or even the customers you were just talking about, really tough, you know, just before it becomes conventional wisdom, to have a real sense of vision of where is the arc of technology going. Uh, it, it's interesting you asked about this AI stuff, right? I mean, you know, it's, all of us have been working on AI for a long time. But this specific uh, era of AI, the bet was, quite frankly, around the scaling laws on these foundation models, right? Uh, it is unclear, right, uh, even a few years ago, uh, whether they would work or not. Uh, but they seem to be working, and I'm not saying this is the last model architecture, there will be more breakthroughs, but at least uh, they are working. And when they're working, as technologists, you take advantage of them. <laughs> uh, and then the more important thing, though, is when I came at it first, what, one thing I learned growing up in infrastructure, Ali, is that I always am sensitive to new workloads. Uh, so in other words, this training, for example, if you take that training workload, inference is also interesting, but the training workload is very data parallel, great. It's also very synchronous, uh, so different than any data parallel workload I'd seen in the past. So one of the things I said is one of the no regrets way for Azure to get ahead was to think about compute storage network and memory in a way that will help these workloads. And so that's kind of how we got started. And then, of course, we saw the 2.5, GPD 2.5 to 3 to 3.5. The GitHub Copilot gave us a lot of confidence uh, around the emerging, emergent capabilities of these foundation models. Uh, and by the way, I, I, I think I love open, open source models, and I love frontier models. And I want us to be able to sort of run both very well so that application developers have the best choice of this next generation of AI. That's amazing. Well, hats off to you. I mean, we use Databricks. We use uh, all of our engineers use Copilot, and we're seeing huge boosts thanks to that prescient that you had. Um, I'm curious. So with AI, there's huge, huge, huge opportunities. OK, and there's some challenges as well. I'm curious, uh, what's your thoughts about the challenges, the opportunities that we all face with this technology and companies and people that represent those companies here in the audience today? How should they think about that? 
it's actually you know ah obviously it's a great question to ask ali and it's a good sort of set of issues for us to deal with somebody gave me this analogy but i think is very helpful um you know if let's just say when the steam engine first came out in the late 1700s uh, if all of us talked about the greatness of the steam engine but also sort of dealt with all the unintended consequences like oh we're going to have pollution we're going to i mean the issues of child labor we would have had like what better history right we would have avoided at least you know the horrible 200 years of history so in some sense having a conversation about ai and responsible ai and societal impact of ai all simultaneously i think it's a good thing so i'll first acknowledge that and then perhaps even thinking about it in three parallel tracks right one is i'll call it here and now let's face it right here and now there are certain things which are around let's call it you know misinformation which i have real solutions maybe watermarking maybe some regulation around distribution right so there are real things one can do uh after all misinformation existed before gen ai it may get accelerated with gen ai so what do we do about it uh then there is probably more in the intermediate time frame uh we will have more cyber risk bioterrorism risk or bi bias right uh, uh that are real world uh, harms and so we should really go and say how do we ground these models how do in facts like regulations how do we sort of align them uh those are all things again there are real engineering solutions and then there is a third bucket which is the ai takeoff right what what if we lose control uh and that one obviously is a science problem today because in some sense we really need to solve the alignment problem uh and so i think thinking about all these three things while making both engineering progress so one thing that i encourage our teams is hey remember we are responsible here as engineers to introduce new technology that is safe by design so we shouldn't abdicate so at least we can't as you and i and all of us in this you know in this conference cannot abdicate our responsibility to produce responsible ai and some of the choices even ali like that's why i like copilot even as a metaphor after all we know right these generative models have hallucinations one of the things we can do about hallucinations of course is ground them in facts and you know do retrieval generate you know augmented generation or what have you but more before that you can even put a human in the loop on a design choice so i think there's a lot of choices we as developers of this technology can make that can make this safe uh in terms of its use today while solving some of the harder problems and make ensuring that there is never an ai take off that we're not in control of that's amazing. I mean, that's a really thoughtful answer. And you know, I, I have no doubt. I mean, I've seen Microsoft, and I know how you think about this. You've invested so much in responsible AI for so many years. Uh, you know, I think Microsoft is the company that you know people can bet on will actually be very, very thoughtful about uh, how to how to approach this, uh, all the way from the research at MSR to you know the engineers that are building this stuff. So it's amazing to see. Um, my final question for you. You know, we've had an amazing partnership. It's you know Microsoft, Azure, Databricks. You know, made thousands of thousands of customers worldwide super, super uh, successful with these projects around data and AI for the last, you know, five to ten years. I'm curious, what's your vision for the next five years for the partnership? You know, first of all, I mean, I think of this as Azure DataBricks. So, as far as I'm concerned, uh, to me, it's one of the best partnerships. Uh, you know, you and I and, uh, and Scott and others, we were able to form, and it's just been fantastic to see it grow over the years. And uh, you know, so again, I really thank you and your leadership and your team for even taking a bet on us and really uh, helping grow. I think uh, what has been fantastic for all our mutual customers, right? I mean, when I look at AT&T and its use, or T-Mobile and its use, or Swiss Re, or uh, TD Bank, I mean, it's just fantastic to see the type of intense usage. uh of what you all have done uh on top of azure and i think going forward i i really think they're taking even this generative ai like take for example one of the things we announced at our developer conference was databricks and azure confidential computing yes. uh i think azure confidential computing plus databricks in a world where people want to secure the weights where they want to secure the models i think could be a real thing uh for all the customers uh and partners at the conference so that's a lovely area the other one of course is power bi on top of databricks right so one of the things perhaps the most exciting thing is natural language interface finally comes to uh, you know bi tools to be able to make sense of data so that power uh of analysis i think could be a big breakthrough or you know I, the other day i so, you know, I, i looked at your vs code extension i mean that's so beautifully done and so to me 
really thinking about GitHub Copilot, your VS Code extensions, and then what it does to develop a productivity. So there's so many areas of integration, not let alone, I mean, also, I would love Azure OpenAI to be one of the computes on top of uh, what is happening on Databricks. So I think we have a tremendous surface area of really doing practical, good product integration so that customers can do more, more with Databricks. Thank you so much. Satya, you put it well. I mean, Azure Confidential Compute, VS Code, integration with Power BI, those are things that are top of mind for us. Uh, thank you so much. You're such an inspiration. Uh, good luck with the end of the year. <laughs> Thank you Thank so you. much, Ali. That's a pleasure. Yes. Cheers.